Let's see how to install Ubuntu 24.04 on VirtualBox. First, we have to install VirtualBox on our computer. I already have it installed, but in case you don't, just go to virtualbox.org, then click here on the big blue button where it says download VirtualBox 7. And then you need to choose one of the options according to your operating system. So if, for example, you're on Windows, choose this option and it's been downloaded, I'll stop this download because, as I said, I already have it installed. But the installation of VirtualBox is really as simple as it gets, really straightforward, nothing complicated there. So download the VirtualBox installer, run it, and then next, 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 and you should be fine. Next, we need the ISO file for Ubuntu. To do that, we go to ubuntu.com, this website, ubuntu.com, and here from the top menu, where it says Get Ubuntu, we need to click on Download Ubuntu Desktop. And as you can see, Ubuntu 24.04 is now available and we can download it. So simply click on the green button, download 24.04 LTS, and it should be downloaded. Once again, I already downloaded this file. It's quite a big one, almost six gigabytes. So just click here and it should be downloaded. In my case, it's already in the downloads folder. And here it is. Next, let's open VirtualBox. And we want to create a new virtual machine. So let's click on new. We need to give a name to our new virtual machine. You can change the installation folder for the new virtual machine, but I'm going to go with the default. And then we need to specify the ISO image. So click here on the small arrow, then choose other. And the ISO file should be in your downloads folder. It is for me. So in downloads, I have this file, Ubuntu 24.04, and let's click on open. Now, VirtualBox has a feature called unattended installation, but it seems to not work for this version of Ubuntu, Ubuntu 24.04. So I'm going to check this box, skip unattended installation. So we're going to do it ourselves, but it's really simple. So let's click on next. We need to choose how much memory, how much RAM memory we want to allocate to the new virtual machine. You can go with two gigabytes, which is the default, but I recommend, if possible, give it a bit more. I'll go with six gigabytes. And the same thing goes for the processors. As you can see, my host has 12 of them. So I guess that they can afford an extra one for the virtual machine. I'll go with two. Next, we can enable EFI. You don't have to do it. But if you want your virtual machine to behave a bit more like a modern physical computer, I recommend to enable it. I'm going to. And next. We can set the disk size for the new virtual machine. I'll go with 20 gigabytes. And we get a summary of all of our settings. And let's click on Finish. Great, so everything is ready. Let's start our new virtual machine. And let's try or install Ubuntu. Now, there seems to be a small bug here that causes the virtual machine to hang, as you see. You just get a black screen and nothing happens. If that happens, simply click on Machine, then reset. And the virtual machine will restart and the next time it should work. And we get a preview of Ubuntu 24.04. To start the installation itself, we need to click here. And down here, you can see that it says install Ubuntu. So I'll click on it. We need to choose a language. I'll go with English. Ubuntu 24.04 comes with advanced accessibility options. So if you need any of these, you know, click on the one you need. And then we can move on. So next. For the keyboard layout, I'll go with English US. So next again. It's going to use the wired connection provided by VirtualBox. So next. And let's install Ubuntu. There is an option to work with an auto-install.yaml file to automate the installation process a bit, but I'm not going to use one, so I'll choose interactive installation and let's click on next again. And here we can choose if we want the installation to only include some must-have applications, or if we want the extended selection, which includes a bit more applications, such as an office suite and several other applications. I'll just go with the default selection. 
This option isn't really necessary in virtual machines, so I'm not going to choose it, but I am going to choose this one, as it provides support for some additional media formats. We're using a virtual disk, so we can safely erase it and install Ubuntu on the virtual disk. Rest assured, it will have no effect on your physical drive. Here we need to provide a name, a computer's name, a username, and a password. And I'm going to uncheck this box, so I won't have to type in my password when the virtual machine starts. We need to select a time zone. And here is a summary of the choices we made, and let's click on Install. Now the installation process is taking place. It will take a few minutes. I'll be back when it's done. So it did take a few minutes, but Ubuntu 24.04 is now installed and ready to use. We need to restart our virtual machine. And we're asked to remove the installation medium. Luckily, VirtualBox does it automatically for us, so we can just press on Enter. And we got to the Ubuntu welcome screen. Let's click on Next. We can enable Ubuntu Pro. I'm not going to do it now, so let's skip. We can share some system data with the Ubuntu team. You don't have to, but I will. And we're done. The only problem we seem to have is that Ubuntu doesn't use the entire screen. Luckily, it's really easy to fix, so let's do it now. We simply need to click on Devices, and then Insert Guest Editions CD Image. And you can see that it was added here on the left. That's the Guest Editions Virtual CD-ROM. And now we need to open our terminal. And let's change directory to Media. And here, we should have a folder with the same name as our username. Let's enter this folder. And in this folder, we should be able to find the Guest Editions Virtual CD-ROM. Let's enter this folder. And here, we can find all kinds of files. The one we need is this one, vbox linux editions.run. The thing is that if we just try to run it, and it has to be run with sudo, we get this error message, please install bzip2 tar. So let's do just that. I'll start by updating my package list. And now I'll install bzip2 and tar. Let's try to run the guest editions file now. And it seems to have done something. And if we change the size of the window now, it does seem to respond, and the virtual machine takes up the entire space available. The thing is that the guest editions were not completely installed as they should, and the reason is what's written here. This system is currently not set up to build kernel modules. And to fix that, we need to install GCC make Perl. So let's do that, let's install them. And let's run the guest editions installer one more time. And let's restart our virtual machine. And if we now click on view, we can switch to full screen mode. And our virtual machine now uses the entire screen. 